that's living the run. We're not just chewing the fat, we're getting rid of it. We are your home for everything health and fitness. Living the Run is being brought to you by Puma Aquatics, Standard Process Nutrition, Peak Performance Massage, and to the chiropractic team at Slow Wellness Center. Here are your hosts for Living the Run, Rex Stevens and Paul Tarek. Races, races, and more races. It's a bonanza this weekend. Paul Tarek, here we are. We will cover it here on Living the Run. Races nationally, races locally. ESPN 1280 Ticket. Find us here. You can find us also on Facebook.com, Living the Run. You can find us on uh, LivingTheRun.com. We are going to cover it all. We're going to cover electrolyte drinks, Paul. We're going to cover Justin Levine, a guy that's going to try to run 300 miles in 100 hours. Uh, I hear you've got a race set this weekend. It's races everywhere, Paul Terry. I couldn't I couldn't help but catch the fever. I, got, uh, I may have gotten myself involved in the uh, 5K, city to sea, so... Uh... But I, what I, you know, what I remember is I remember texting Paul, wasn't, you. Isn't it a I half re- marathon? I re- City to the sea. Well, I, no, for some people it is. Not for me though. No, <laughs> no, not for me. Even if that's the only race they offer, I'll still be running a five k. Uh, you know, I remember texting you saying, "Hey, buddy, you want to get in on this? I think it'd be great. Good times. We'll get out there and run." And I, I, I can't remember if you accept. No, you dodged me. You. Totally I seem to remember that uh, you challenged me only after you heard that I had two sons that would probably be in a stroller and me pushing them, and you thought that was a really good opportunity you would have to get me to into le- a race. You would have something to lean on with wheels. I mean, you have mechanical <laughs> advantage involved there. And if you really wanted to, you could get out and make one of your sons push. Oh, gosh, Paul, you're going to get into these topics like the uh, shoot that one-legged wrestler who won the national championship this year, and they talked about his advantage that he had as a... That's a one-legged guy. Uh, unbelievable stuff. Uh, anyway, no, shoot, races galore, Paul. We got City to the Sea this weekend. For most of those runners, it's going to be a half marathon. Apparently, they got an exemption for you. Uh, we've got uh, Morro Bay Triathlon uh, this weekend. We'd had Kristen and Yishai Horowitz on. They're putting that thing on this weekend. We got uh, Nike Women's Marathon up in the Bay Area. Kona World Championships uh, Ironman Triathlon out in Hawaii. It is racing fever. Come here. Fall fever. You actually have me nervous now. I'm sorry. I didn't pay attention to anything you just said because now I'm thinking, wait, maybe it is a half marathon. And maybe, I, maybe I've committed to something I'm not ready to commit to at this point. We'll have to... I'll have, to, I'll have to see about this. I, I may be just be running a 5K out of a, out of a half marathon. We'll see. <laughs> well, I doubt that uh, Justin Levine, our guest here in about 15 minutes, will drag you out there for 300 miles uh, uh, running running out there on the road. He's going to start on October 16th. And what makes it more spectacular about this guy is it's not the fact that he's running 300 miles in 100 hours. That's, that's amazing. But it's more what he's doing with this foundation and this company that he's called Limitless. Uh, trying to take limits off of our life trying to get past some of those things that we have as barriers and get out there and and, uh, push the envelope a little bit. Get a little uncomfortable, but at the same time, be able to take uh, yourself to higher human potential. Yeah, I just, I I can't get past the 300 hours or 300 miles in 100 hours. That's... uh... (laughs) I, I don't even have, there, I have a car that I don't know if would go at 300 miles in 100 hours. I, <laughs> I believe you do, too. If anybody's seen your garage, it's uh, not a surprise at all that that, <laughs> that might be in there. You're not, you're not shocked that I have a vehicle that I'd question its uh, capabilities? Hey, Paul, you know, one thing I want to uh, get to here is, is and talk to you about a little bit before uh, Virginia comes back on. And e- each week we've been meeting with her. And one of the things you talk about when you're going 300 miles or any kind of racing deal, and I know you've been in some some hot, hot weather, doing decathlon over two days. Talk about some of the electrolyte drinks that you messed with, because we're going to talk about some homemade electrolyte drinks that you can do very, very cheaply, uh, very, very well, and kind of uh, avoid some of the food coloring dyes, some of the sugar, and some of the other uh, products that are kind of weighing people down. What did, what did you mess with? One of the ones one of the ones I actually, the one that I settled on was uh, my massage therapist, Chantel, got me, uh, she got me turned on to this, uh, it, was, it was very simple. Just uh, it was a sea salt, a little bit of natural like pure cane sugar, and uh, you know some lemons in it. And it was it was you know you didn't have to make it really sweet or really tasty, but uh, it it was great for going out and training. I, I that was kind of what I settled on after years of Gatorade or Powerade or you know some of these other ones, and then some random like home mixtures. And then it was, uh, you know. It seemed to work the best when, uh, if I was running, I wasn't trying to chug this like sh- shake concoction that I had made. 
<laughs> yeah, it's one of the difficult things, you know, and, and oftentimes it, I think we see people go the wrong way is, is that uh, they can't figure out what works for them at all. And they go out there and they end up dehydrating themselves um, just simply because they, they try a fluid when they're out there. It doesn't work. They cramp up. They run into problems. What was the common thing that you saw out there with guys uh, in meets that maybe weren't making uh, making the weekend? I think the big I think the big mistake that uh, most people make, uh, whether and, and this was the Catholics that we were competed with, as well as just regular people out training, uh, doing their weekend work, uh, weekend warrior workouts. The big thing is, I think for people forget to, to drink while they're while they're doing stuff. They get so involved, they're focused on what they're doing that they forget to bring a, you know bring something along, bring along something to eat, bring along an electrolyte drink, bring along something to re, you know replenish the body. Um, one of the one of the biggest things that I think that people don't uh, they don't pay attention to is leading up to a competition or leading up to a race. Uh, a lot of people just you know they either they either don't want to eat anything the morning of, so then they have no fuel in their stomach, or they you know read something online and then they try to change the, what they've done completely. Uh, and you know neither one of those is going to work. So we'll, we'll talk to Virginia and see what she says. Yeah, it looks like Virginia's on the line. We've had a, a, a great time with her. That meal was absolutely stunning last week for uh, under twenty dollars. Feeds a family of four. Organic foods uh, kind of dispelled some myths. Again, if you guys missed that last week, Virginia put these things online for us. We got recipes. We got the whole uh, podcast on there. So like we said, every week, Train meets with Virginia. And here on Living the Run, we eat with Virginia. Virginia, thanks for coming back on. You're very welcome. Um, total agreement, replenishment, especially those liquids. I mean, my first thought is water, water, water. Hey, it's, it's a pretty decent thought. But one of the things that's out there, as you know, if you go up and down these aisles in Albertsons, Vaughn's, etc., all you see is the plethora of rainbow colors and we got to make sure we we make a distinction here last week we talked about having the rainbow in our foods but we were talking about fruits and vegetables not food color dyes uh, for our electrolyte drinks talk to us a little bit about how to make a cheap electrolyte drink and again you know max woodcock producer here paul Tarek, all of us in studio we're drinking these electrolyte drinks as they are here we're testing them on the site tell us about uh, one what you put in them why you put them in there and then tell us about the cost on uh, you made two pint drinks here for us. Yes, correct. So, um, yeah, and we, we have huge myths of marketing that we have to dismantle with some of these drinks. These athletes are looking for something to help them perform and recover at a, at a super level, and they really bought into some of these colors and these designs and these labels. And the reality is, is we need to replenish our electrolytes when we sweated or like depleted ourselves of fluids and minerals. So it's pretty easy. Our body craves a couple of things. One is it craves water. So the main ingredient in one of my drinks that's sweet and salty is distilled water. Very simple. The second ingredient is sea salt. Sea salt is a, I talk about it in my cooking. Um, we go with that same Himalayan sea salt. The pink one has a large level of minerals in it. Just stick it in your water. You could be as simple as that. It doesn't taste as good. It's not as pretty. It's definitely, you know, not as flashy. Um, citrus is a great thing to add in. High in vitamin C and antioxidants. It also has a good little increase in your glycemic index, so it kind of gives you that kick when you're feeling down. Um, ginger is another thing I added. Great ginger is great for anti-inflammatory. If you have a muscle cramp, if you're just you're really feeling that fatigue, ginger is perfect for the post-race during the race. And then finally, I add mint. Um, the reason why we do mint is it's got an Ayurvedic calming um, for both the digestive tract as well as the blood, um, and it tastes good. It kind of kicks away a little bit of that salty uh, sea water taste of the uh, sweet and salty drink. Um, this is really for someone who's worked super, super hard and needs a way to get that replenishment quick. So, um, what do you guys think of it? So, so this, the, the, which one is the yellow one? That's the one that's uh, sweet and salty. It's citrus yeah, and it's got some seeds. Yeah. So that one, uh, I, I like that one, but I gotta be, I, I don't know if I could drink that while I was actually running. It, it, it seems like it's just, it's very salt. It's, it's not salty. It's, you can taste all the ingredients, I think is the thing. Yeah. Well, the idea here is, Paul, I think, and Virginia, you would say this too, is, is the simplicity of that is, is all you got to do is add a little bit more distilled water exactly. to, to, to dilute it down, that make that thing awesome. a little, yeah. It, it, and I want to, I want to make a point there, Virginia, you used distilled water when you did yeah. this. Make, yeah. Talk, talk about that. Well, there's a couple 
different water choices you can use. You can use distilled or you can use reverse osmosis water. Definitely try not to use um, something that's just straight from the faucet if you have to boil it. Um, the idea is that you're not trying to take a depleted body and fill it with toxins, which is probably my biggest push for not buying Shure brand um, electrolyte drinks is because they have toxins, known toxins in them. So when your body is depleted from a hard workout, a hard run, the last thing you want to do is put something toxic in your system. So distilled water I generally go with because it actually is already um, demineralized. So when you add the sea salt, you're getting that straight, pure minerals in, um, from that sea salt. So hey. again, if you have to use sink water, just boil it for at least five, ten minutes before you ingest it. It's cracking me up. You know, I used to live in Atlanta, and uh, <laughs> in Atlanta, you know, they got their water supply from the Chattahoochee, and the Chattahoochee was toxic as hell. And, and the reality was is, is that the city decided to pay the fines to keep the, the water toxic rather than pay the amount of money it would take to clean the thing up. So we literally, Virginia, had to have a pot of water, and we boiled it at all times before we ever drank it because that stuff was so toxic. Hey, one thing I want to mention to the listeners, that's sweet and salty. One pint of that stuff costs 30 cents to make. Give me a break. This is as cheap as it can be. We're yeah. spending, spending way more money for toxic uh, drinks out on the uh, the, the aisles. Yeah, amazing. stored in plastic. It's a disaster. Talk to us real quick about the coconut water and spirulina. What do we got in that drink that's different and uh, what are the benefits of some of those things? So first of all, it's um, very vibrant in color. So if you're missing that, you know, blue Gatorade, um, feel free to, you know, brighten up your workout with the spirulina. Um, <laughs> I have talked to numerous athletes, and this was a big trend for a while, this coconut water and spirulina. But it's a strong trend that's actually been around for a very long time in different countries. The young coconut water, which essentially is a green coconut, so not the iconic fuzzy brown coconut that we're used to, the liquid inside of it. Spirulina is a blue-green algae that you can get at most markets nowadays. Um, people refer to this as a complete lead transfusion. I thought it was kind of a joke. Researched it. In fact, third world countries use it in replacement of a blood transfusion. This will literally increase the platelets in your system. It will increase your minerals as well as um, basically restore all vitality within supposedly 30 minutes of drinking one pint. So this is a great if you're down and out, you're really feeling lousy, um, this is a common remedy even for women post-labor. So, um, like I said, it tastes pretty good. <laughs> I like more expensive. I like this one. Max Woodcock, he, he's kind of got this uh, interesting look on his face. I'm trying to figure out what he's thinking. Give us some feedback, Max, on uh, these two drinks here. I have to say, uh, the first one I tried was the yellow one. And <laughs> Again, take... let, let's go with the, the... These things have names, Max. Sweet yeah. I'm and taking salty. phone calls over here. <laughs> I can't listen to everything all at once. Yeah, but I sweet mean, and salty. I'm, well, I keep thinking we're big time on this show, but I'm finding out that it's just, it's not quite to that level yet. Tell us about the sweet and salty, Max. Sweet and salty, I liked. It had a hint of the uh, the mint, I believe it was, that I tasted. Uh, a little on the saltier yeah. side, like Paul was saying, as far as, you know, for me to be out there running and pretty tired and, you know, you get that kind of, I want something to quench my thirst while I'm in the middle of a run. That would be, like, I would have to get used to it. But And, and dilute it. You know, the first, yeah. like, five seconds after I took the sip, every flavor was great. That was great. very good. And then the green one, what was the official term for that one? Yeah, she, we've just got young coconut water and spirulina. Yeah, young right. coconut water. And a little bit more expensive on this one, too. I want to make a note. 30 cents on the sweet and salty. About a buck for the coconut water and the spirulina. But tell us what you got on that. It, it had kind of a nice, earthy kind of flavor oh. to it. And that was pretty tasty. You know, it reminded me not quite so much of a wine, but, you know, something that <laughs> that's a little bit more evolved in its flavor okay. profile. <laughs> I liked it. You know, Max is sitting here call, calling your drink. He's, it's more evolved like, on the flavor profile. This is good stuff here. Well, and one thing I want to remind Max and Paul before I go is that if you're on a run, I don't want you drinking these if you're thirsty. You should be drinking water if you're thirsty. These are for when you have depleted yourself of so many electrolytes that you need to actually restore your system. You don't mean to quench your thirst per se, same as Pedialyte isn't meant to quench the thirst of a young child. These are literally meant to get your minerals, your GI, everything up at a high level quickly. So 
don't think of them. Like, go to water. Water is your best choice always. So. A, a great, that's a great point. But as, as our next guest coming on, Justin Levine, who's about to run 300 miles in four days, uh, some of these things may be a, a, a nice replenishment for him. Uh, yeah, probably about every 10 miles. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Hey, Virginia, as always, we love it. We look forward to you next week. I think, shoot, we may be doing something from Kennedy next week. Uh, and uh, we look forward to that. So, as always, thanks for the electrolyte drinks. You're very welcome. Have a good night. All right. Hey, this is good stuff, Paul. You know, again, it's something that I think people don't really think they can do at home. And they think that it's more convenient to just go to the aisle, pick up 10 bottles of some toxic Gatorade or Powerade or something. But in reality, they can make an enormous jug of this stuff. And all it takes is just a little bit of movement here or there, a little less honey, a little less salt, a little more water, what have you. And you've got the perfect drink for yourself, and it's cheap. I think I think it's been proven. You know, I, I am not going to go out of my way and do five hours worth of work to you know to prepare a drink. <laughs> but yeah, but it was when I was when I was training, it was it was very easy to just make a jug, throw it in the refrigerator, have that in there, and before I went to practice, you know, I, I might make up four or five bottles of it, throw them in the fridge, and I just grab one on the way out, you know. Um, and like you said, everybody's a little bit different. Their tastes are going to be a little different. The idea is you're not trying to make something that's super tasty or very sugary on your way out. You're just trying to make a drink, kind of pick pick a starting point, write it down, go out, do, do a good, have a good training session, and then, you know, see how you feel. Like, if you, if you noticed in the middle of my training session, I was feeling kind of like, oh, man, I drank too much. Maybe that had a little too much sugar. I was kind of jittery. Maybe I crashed a little bit. Then you can take a little bit out. You know, maybe you feel a little more lethargic when you're done. You'll feel a little uh, uh, not quite as uh, invigorated when you're when you're uh, done. Maybe you add a little bit more salt in it. I mean, it, it's up to you, but... See, I really like that they weren't sugary because when I, you know, anytime I've ever had Gatorade or Powerade, I, I feel like sick to my stomach. It's so sugary. It's absolutely it's over the top and you're just, you feel weighed down by it. So I actually kind of like that they were a little bit more refreshing. The, the, the coconut water and, uh, and spirulina was, was almost very similar to the salt and sugar one with lemon that we would do. And it was just, it, it was a little bit sweet, but not, you know, you weren't mixing it up like Kool-Aid, like a wooden spoon in your old mom's. Like, Dick. Yeah, no question. I think that, you know, she made a really good point that when she made the these drinks, she didn't make them based on you putting them in a water bottle as you were running. She made them as a replenishment uh, at the time, and certainly you're going to water them down dramatically if you're going to use them in a long, long deal. Hey, I don't want to hold Justin up anymore. We got Justin Levine coming on after the break. You're not going to want to miss this interview because... It's more than just about running 300 miles in less than 100 hours. This guy's got incredible stuff. Limitless is the philosophy. Hang with us here on Living the Run next with Justin Levine. We're back with Living the Run. Back here on Living the Run. Great first segment. Uh, we found out about a bunch of simple homemade electrolyte drinks you can do at home. We had the uh, Young Coconut Water and Spirulina, the Sweet and Salty from Virginia. Again, cheap options, healthy options, easy to do at home, uh, and things that you can use both from a recovery perspective or as well in your races. Speaking of races, don't forget this weekend, Morro Bay Triathlon. We got City to the Sea, local events. Come support your athletes. Uh, and then as well, pay attention to what's happened on the national scale. Big time stuff. Kona World Championships, Ironman. We got uh, Nike Marathon up in the Bay Area. Some A lot of good stuff, a lot of good races. But let's get to it. Our next guest... Focusing on this idea of limitless, limitless in the in the realm of human potential. He's got a sign that I love on one of his videos that we posted here on LivingTheRun.com and on our Facebook. It says, "Make life spectacular." He's going out three hundred, starting on October sixteenth, three hundred miles. He's going to run in less than a hundred hours. That's in less than four, or that's in four days. We're talking seventy-five miles a day. Paul, Justin Levine, thanks so much for joining us. Hey, man, uh, I'm, I'm so blessed and honored to be on the show, you guys. I mean, uh, I've listened to your show the last couple times and super excited to uh, to just be part of what you guys are, are promoting. Thank you for having me. Hey, we love what you're pro- promoting as well, this idea of limitlessness. But, hey, can we get back to this electrolyte thing? You know, we're sitting in here, we're drinking these drinks and trying to figure out how to make it fit our profile. When you talk about going 300 miles, you had to have thought about this before. You had to have played around with some different concoctions and some different ideas to replenish your own system. What are you using and what tends to work for you? 
Uh, the one of the biggest things that I really am conscientious of before I even talk about what electrolyte I, drink I use is, is I'm really focused on just a rock solid diet in terms of just you know pure food, healthy, fresh, whole food that's gonna you know fuel me during this during this journey, and that's such a huge uh, uh, aspect of my life. I mean, from the minute I wake up and from the from the minute I go to bed, I'm always focusing on what calories are coming into my body and how are they affecting my performance. So that's step number one. And, and, and I, you know, I'm also a performance coach, and that's what I really, uh, you know, I just really push that aspect of, of the program is first handle the nutrition side and then use uh, supplements as part, of, as part of your nutrition. But, yes, as you're, as you're training for endurance sports and even into the ultra-distance world, you're definitely going to have to use some type of electrolyte drink uh you know as i'm as i'm tapping into the the long distance stuff uh i, I started using uh goo roctane uh the electrolyte drink mix from goo and and i actually we did a training weekend about three and a half weeks ago where we we kind of had a practice session uh we ran uh, 115 miles in a three-day span 48 the first day 40 the second day 27 the third day and this roctane just basically did the job for me and um you know, I have a, a 32 ounce Camelback bottle and also a 22 ounce bottle. One's with water, one's filled up with uh, with my electrolyte drink of choice, and just kind of sipping on both. Um, you know, exactly what uh, Virginia was talking about is uh, you know not forcing it. You know, basically drinking based on uh, thirst, and, and 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 you kind of have to be aware of it too. You know, every eight to ten minutes, you should be drinking and and sipping on some type of fluid to to be in control of it because when you start going the other way and you get backwards and, and you're behind it's it's tough to to catch up so um, right now i'm going with rocktane i'm very fortunate because the the local running store here in town which is called soul to soul running uh they they've been awesome and they're, they're helping uh, sponsor this event so they're kicking down uh some rocktane uh, uh rocktane powder and then also some some gels and some bars so i'm, I'm lucky to have those those people on my side too. Now you just made mention to it. You did a. Uh, you already did a three day run that was uh, pretty intense. So you've had a chance to uh, you know kind of try a little bit uh, uh, maybe different recipes or different uh, products. You know, do you find that that's going to be a big uh, maybe a limiting factor on you know day one to two? Uh, it maybe let's say you don't get enough water if you don't get enough food in you uh, to recover. Are you going to be able to you know kind of come back from that? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it's just kind of the ultra-distance running uh, part of it is, is having the resiliency to bounce back if, if there's a low moment. And, and there are going to be low moments. I mean, the three-day training camp, um, in terms of nutrition, I, I did a pretty good job uh, with staying in control of my nutrition and being aware of it. Um, I, I, like I said, I mean, on a 48-mile run, I think that day I only had three gels, four gels, but, um, you know, I had nuts and trail mix and, uh, you know, bars and, and just peanut butter and jelly sandwiches just because that food, when you're running longer and a little at a slower pace, you're able to digest that food uh, at, a, at a little better uh, efficiency rate. So um, I'm not going to, you know, you know, put down 15 gels throughout an entire entire run because, man, the stomach is just going to, you know, explode on something like that. I did, uh, I did Ironman last year in, in Arizona, and I had some stomach problems. I was... I was fit for it. I was ready to roll. And by the time I got to mile, you know, five of the run, my stomach was, was ready to go. And, um, you know, luckily I, I bounced back. I was resilient and I was able to relieve myself and get rid of some of that fluid, um, you know, that I had stuck in my stomach and I was able to finish strong. But I, I, I basically ran into trouble because I drank too much, uh, like you guys were talking about, of that commercial type uh, fluid. I think they had, uh, they had like power bar, uh, electrolyte drink which I didn't really practice with but I was I was feeling with that so again that's another tip is don't ever use something in a race that you've never practiced with because you never know how your body's going to handle it Hey, we're talking to Justin Levine here on Living the Run. Uh, you can find the rest of this podcast if you want on livingtherun.com if you missed any of it or on facebook.com. Join us there. He is set to run 300 miles starting October 16th in four days, essentially less than 100 hours. I guess the big question to you, Justin, is why? 
Yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, sometimes I ask myself that question, you know, every, 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 nice. especially as these days turn into hours and hours are turning into minutes. Uh, but you know what? It, it's been, this journey has been unbelievable, honestly, the last probably four months of, of spreading the word. Uh, you know, we've created a, a limitless committee and we're promoting it and uh, people are donating money and people are coming together and, and people are telling me their testimonials of them breaking their limits and barriers. And it's just been humbling, man, to see the impact that, you know, just some, <laughs> the reason why probably where the idea came from was I was, uh, it was Christmas break. Uh, I was doing some running. I had just done Ironman. So I was reevaluating the goals and just kind of seeing what was next. And uh, I was, I, I told my wife, you know, we were up at her parents' house, and I told her, hey, do you know what? I'm gonna just start running home. We live about three and a half hours, uh, my, you know, driving a car uh, away from our house, and and so I just ran 25, 25 miles home, and she picked me up on the side of the road, and that was like a, I had a revelation that day during that run of saying, man, I just, I have more. There, there, there's more people to inspire. There's uh, you know, people, we set these limits on ourselves, you know, we, we go on an hour run and yeah, that might be part of the training, training program that day, but it's like we set the, that bar right at that hour and then we stop. And so I just started thinking about all these limits and, and walls that we built up. And so I was thinking, well, something that's going to push my limit would be some type of big run. And so I started uh, throwing around the idea with some of the ultra distance guys that I know. And these are hardcore guys. I'm not even a, a hardcore ultra guy that, uh, you know, I've done triathlons for a few years and um, so I was just kind of bouncing the idea off and at first it was 300 miles in two weeks but then I'm thinking I can't take work off that long I own a place and uh, they need the boss to run around and it was just been too hard to take that much time off and so, so we started saying well 300 miles five days six days and then we we just kind of dialed it into a hundred hour a hundred hour time frame and we, we, we named it Limitless um, you know which is just an just the perfect name because you know in my opinion life is limitless if you decide to believe in yourself if you decide to you know kind of spread yourself a little thin and and, and shoot for these these very ambitious goals and and life is life is limitless and and when you when you accomplish that goal it's like optimal life is right there and now now life can be lived at very high high levels and so we're promoting this this uh philosophy and it's just it's spreading it's spreading quickly and you know people need it right now in our in our society people need it in our world um we just need that type of positive uh mindset going into you know these next these next couple of years and 10 years 20 years of our life and um it's just going to aid in better living now talk a little bit about the uh, the course you know it, it's it's going to be hard to set up a, a you know 300 mile course someplace and are there going to be other people running with you or how, how is this going to work yeah, you're right. Uh, the course was, I mean, I've been studying the course the last four weeks. I mean, just like uh, like I'm a kid, you know, training, studying for a college test, just looking at ins and outs and what's the best route, what's the safest route. Um, so the course is by Shelly, California. Um, we're running to Farmersville, Exeter, Lindsay, Porterville, Bakersfield. Then we're heading east. We're going to climb into Tehachapi. We're going to go to Mojave. Then we're going to head south again through Lancaster. Palmdale. We're going to run through the Angeles Forest, which could be just beautiful, beautiful running. And then when we spit out the Angeles Forest, then we'll kind of be running uh, through Glendale, Sherman Oaks, uh, get into like uh, like really eastern Thousand Oaks, and then head south to Malibu and then Santa Monica. So it's just like you look at that and you start talking about it, it's like, holy mackerel, what did I get myself into? But, <laughs> that's, a lo- that's a lot of dots to connect. Yeah, it's a lot of dots to connect. So I kind of played around with this map a few times and just kind of, you know, I, I want to stay away from the busy, busy highways as much as possible, of course. And uh, so we're just, we're, and it turns out it's going to be pretty cool because there's a lot of uh, country roads that runs parallel to a lot of these busier highways. So it's, it's going to be a safe route. And then 
when I kind of started discovering this idea, um, one of my good friends, uh, his name is Josh Hickey. He's just he's a he's an ultra freak. I mean, he I think he's ran 12, 13 ultra distance marathons in the last just two and a half years, from 50 k's to 100 milers, and he's done a couple Ironmans. He's just a you know a super positive guy. Just loves to train. You know, I'm always on him to train a little smarter, but you know, with some of these guys, it's just they just love getting out there and running and when I when I introduced the idea with him, I mean he I mean no even blink of the eye he was down to to be my pace man, my number one pace man. So he's gonna be running um right now he's planning on running the whole entire thing with me and then um this other gentleman he's uh, this guy's not running but he's gonna be uh, our our sag bicyclist or so he's gonna cycle with us the whole entire time. This is a sixty two year old uh, his name is Jim Barnes and this guy has triathlon across America um, and he does it all for his brother's brain injury foundation. His brother died of a brain injury. He started this foundation uh, to raise money and awareness on brain injuries, and he builds and rebuilds bikes and gives helmets to the, you know, to the kids who are in need. And it's just, I mean, talk about a great crew right there. It's just, it's going to keep me on the right mindset and um, the right, uh, just that right positive mindset that I'm going to need during the entire run. So those guys are going to be with us the entire time, and then. We put together a little relay team. We call it Team Limitless, and we have 12 runners that are meeting us throughout, uh, you know, the course and running between 20 and 30 mile sections of the course with us. So, and those and those runners committed to helping us raise some of the money too, in terms of what we're what we're shooting for for our foundation. So, it's been humbling, man. I mean, it, it, I've learned a lot about myself, but I've also learned a lot about when a group of people decide to do a positive the thing it can explode and, and it just makes a huge impact in the community so just excited for it Hey, you got this video online, and if you haven't seen this video, on uh, we posted it on Facebook, but you got a four-minute video. I've watched it multiple times now. starts with that sign of Make Life Spectacular. Something I found amazing on that video is it seemed as though everybody you had interviewed was spiritually dialed in to the same thing. It was almost like they had all suffered something and that they were all looking to heal that suffering and to realize that they were more than the suffering, more than that low that they had experienced in their life, and they were looking to seek uh, something a little higher. Intentional? That must have been intentional in that video because each and every person, male, female, young or old, all seemed dialed in to the same message. I think that's just like limitless is, is everybody, including myself, we have we have that wall around us, whether it's really high or really enclosed, and everybody can relate to those limitations, whether it's from the society, um, somebody else is being negative and harping on you all the time, or if it's self-imposed, maybe it's just, uh, you know, a self-esteem thing where you look in the mirror and you don't see the person you want to see, or you're just really setting the bar really low for yourself, so I think part of that is just people relate to the, the, the foundation and the platform of what we're, of what we're trying to promote. And then again, it's, it's too, you know, I believe truly in surrounding yourself with like-minded people who are going to, you know, believe in you and inspire you. Uh, and so a lot of those people we've interviewed, I mean, it's, it's the crew, it's the people that are, uh, at our fitness Academy that I own and it's the people that we're, you know, surrounded with. So, I mean, but some of them weren't that necessarily runners, they were just friends or people I just met that happened to just, you know, uh, get attracted to this project and, and want to and wanna help out in any way they could. So, yeah, it, 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 it's been, like I said, it's been really, really neat how people have come together for this project because I think there's a relation in terms of that limitless mindset to break down some of those barriers that we, that we just set up and the next thing you know, 10, 20 years down the road, it's like there and all you have to do is just start chiseling it away and before you know it you break open and now life can be lived Hey, Justin, this has been great stuff. And I'll tell you, you know who it's probably, I think, been greatest for as I'm sitting in studio here is Paul Tarek. You know, Paul Tarek was this Olympian, you know, seven years ago, eight years ago, whatever it was. And, you know, now he's setting these limits on himself. We got a half marathon race here locally, and this guy wants to run a 5K. Uh, Your message couldn't have been better to this Olympian. I think his self-esteem is down. You know, he was at a a high level, you know, years ago. Let me me clarify this. My self-esteem. 
James not down. <laughs> my my realism that I'm 210 pounds and a little out of shape, not as good, not not in quite as good a shape though. Is, I, yeah, I got. I just have to. I have to get back. You know, I, I have to. You, you don't just. You don't just throw it all in the fire at once. You got to warm it up. <laughs> hey, Justin. Thanks for motivating our listeners. Thanks for doing what you do. Thanks for setting up Limitless. We hope to check in with you after that. The four days is done. Maybe we'll let you have a day off or two days off. Maybe you can try one of Virginia's electrolyte drinks to yeah. replenish a little bit there. And uh, maybe we can check in and just find out how it went, what the support was like, and uh, how much money we raised, and uh, you know how many people got impacted. Absolutely, man. I would love to come back on, and I know my energy and my inspiration is going to be even uh, magnified tenfold after this run. So um, I'm humbled that I, I was able to come on such a great show, you guys, and uh, keep keep living the run, man. And I'm going to continue to spread the word. Hey, rock on, Justin. Hey, do good, and uh, thank you. Thanks again so much. We'll check in with you soon. All right. Take care, guys. All right. Hey, good stuff, Paul. Uh, 300 miles, Paul. Four days. You're cutting a half marathon down to a 5K. It doesn't make me feel bad. It, it, I feel great. You know what? It makes me feel great for him. That's that's you know three hundred. Dean, I wonder if uh, I wonder if Dean wants to you know Carnes wants to try to get a hold of those three hundred miles in four days. Uh, Dean would be the guy. Dean he would, he yeah, would be the guy. Another fan of living the run. When we return, we'll talk about Paul Tarek's race a little bit this next weekend with Dave Sullivan five k race challenge out there uh, for you guys, City of the Sea. Again, remember Morro Bay Triathlon again this weekend. And when we return. Athlon Elite has joined in with Living the Run. We got Ryan Joyner here. Talk a little exercise. Recovery post maybe 300-mile run. Or, hey, how about a little recovery just for Paul Tarek's 5K? Back in moments. We're back with Living the Run. Hey, welcome back to Living the Run here on ESPN 1280, The Ticket. Awesome, awesome show uh, thus far. Talking electrolyte drinks, both uh, replenishing after your workouts. Talked about what to do during. Virginia, as always, bringing in great recipes. Uh, Justin Levine's interview, Paul Tarek, was just flat out fantastic. Uh, guy's inspirational. He's motivational. Going 300 miles in, in, a, in 100 hours. Uh, it's big time stuff. But I, what was most inspirational about that guy is not necessarily the distance. Gosh darn it, that guy was positive. And uh, you could tell that he had changed his mindset uh, with this limitless option to just be ready to tackle whatever life brings yeah i was i was almost inspired to maybe run 10k instead of 5k <laughs> oh geez paul's talking again about city to sea this weekend fans please come out for this support your local racers a uh, half marathon for everybody but paul Tarek, he's going to be racing dave sullivan i believe uh, in a 5k there and uh that's a, that's a big race there paul well, uh how much you been training for that uh, I'm going to start tonight, I think, maybe tomorrow night. But uh, more importantly, you know, you don't just have to come to support. You don't have to be a fan of running. We enjoy hecklers, too. You know, you can come out, just anything to get out there, get active, uh, get doing something. Hecklers are good, and, and uh, they can come to the Morro Bay Triathlon this weekend as well. So big race weekend. Hey, I want to say this uh, to the listeners. This is the kind of stuff I've got to deal with on a, a weekly basis. I got a text message from Paul Tarek last week, and it said, holy, oh, well, can't say that, but I have a great idea. Why don't we do a fitness cal- calendar starring somebody local that we can have on as guests each week <laughs> to talk about fitness and exercise? And I said, gosh, Paul, sometimes your genius overwhelms me. He says, imagine being me every day. Uh, what we're going to st- start here is uh, ath- we got Ryan Joyner in from the former Athlon Elite. Talk to us a little bit about where Athlon Elite is going, what it's now called, and uh, what we can expect from Athlon in the future. Yeah, sure. Thanks for having me on. And uh, <clears throat> Athlon, I mean, Athlon Elite still exists. We we were an offshoot of Athlon Health and Fitness, um, which was basically more performance side of things. So Athlon Health and Fitness was a health club started in 2003. I opened it with San Luis Sports Therapy. And then in 07, we wanted to have a more of a performance-oriented facility. So we opened up another suite next to us and built that purely around performance. Athletes' performance, you know, CrossFit performance, a little more intense intense style workout. Um, since then, Athlon Elite has kind of led the charge even back into the health club, and now the full health club has become a- 
Athlon Fitness and Performance, and um, essentially Athlon Elite is our performance department within the, the overall facility, which is Athlon Fitness and Performance. Our website is still AthlonElite.com, our Facebook is still Athlon Elite, but um, as a whole, we, we're more than just performance too, you know, so I mean, we, I, I have a 88-year-old client, I have a 92-year-old client, uh, so, you know, but I also have the Mission Prep basketball team, and I have a number of other performance-oriented athletes, so a little bit of everything. Yeah, you know, I love that about you guys, too, and it's one reason why, you know, I, we came to you, Ryan, and, and asked, hey, can you be a part of helping educate our listeners on a weekly basis? You know, we have Virginia coming in and teaching some of the basics of nutrition, how to use things around locally to uh, make life easier and healthier, to be able to replenish uh, yourself, whether it's post-workout, uh, whether it's pre-workout, uh, just basic eating in general, costs, etc. We wanted to have an exercise corner, too, and we needed somebody like you who kind of sees it all. Uh, for people who are seeking more wellness in uh, in fitness, but people who are also looking for performance, we wanted to have a different topic each week, be able to come in and hit that topic and then leave our listeners with something good that they can take into that next week. And I think this week, you know, the topic simply had to be recovery. I mean, when you start to talk about the two races we got this weekend, triathlon, Morro Bay triathlon, we got Sea to the Sea, and then we talked to a guy like Justin Levine, who's going to run 300 miles in four days. Talk to us a little bit about how you approach recovery with some of your athletes, both from when you're training them or you know that they are training for a particular event uh, that is going to be taxing on the system. What are some of the strategies that we implore uh, from Athlon there? Yeah, well, so uh, you know, re recovery is a, a giant topic, and you can talk on it from a nutrition standpoint. You can talk on it from a rest standpoint. You can talk on it from a uh, liver glycogen recovery standpoint. You know, all the above. Um, I, you know, to, to focus in on the exercise part of it, and really where we put a lot of focus at Athlon is is in the nervous system, nervous system recovery, which I know you 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 know that's your specialty sure. as well. And um, you know, the nervous system. To give her just a, this is a 24-hour show that we can talk <laughs> yeah, all about threat yeah, 20, matrix. And, totally, yeah, totally, you know. because uh, Max has kind of set us up good here. Uh, you know, he got in with Mike, and we just kind of pulled the strings. Yeah. We're making long shows now. We just kind of have, you know, we just kind of run the deal here yeah. at ESPN, I think. We don't have to. The, don't, <laughs> the Le Mans of the radio. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You, well, remember, limitless. We're, <laughs> yes. we're limitless here. Yeah, so, yeah. No, no commercial <laughs> breaks. We're 24 hours on threat neural matrix. We're going to go yeah, right now. Exactly. I just heard a collective large click of a lot of radio <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Did they just switch over to that country station? What's going on here? Yeah. <laughs> no, so the real quick uh, synopsis here is your nervous system has one job, right? And, and essentially, at, at every second of the day, it's making one decision. Am I going to live or am I going to die? And it's, of course, taking in all this information from millions and millions of sensors in your body as to am I going to live or die? And, and then really what that is, is is prediction. And if it's getting great signal from its joints, and great signal from your eyes and great signal from your inner ear, your vestibular system, then it feels very comfortable in its ability to predict its survival. So one of the things that I have found and experimented and really it came from doing some just super intense workouts and you know CrossFit style workouts was that afterwards I was less flexible, I, I was stiff, I was sore, I didn't walk as efficiently and feel as good as I ought to. And the whole purpose here is to leave feeling better than <laughs> not, right? I mean, that's that's what exercise is supposed to be about, and so um, so we started you know experimenting experimenting around with this concept of threat to the nervous system, and one of the things that your nervous system loves is joint mobility. When your joint moves through a full range of motion and, and moves through a comfortable range of motion, and it's in the right position and everything else, it's getting lots of signal to the brain. The brain says, "Cool, everything is good. I'm going to have less. I'm going to create less pain. I'm going to allow you to move more efficiently and everything else," and which is the whole goal as an athlete or as a uh, you know what we call a keyboard athlete sitting at your desk right so um, we uh, so anyway that's that's a real quick background um, after a workout you know a lot of people will stretch thinking that now that now's the time I want to become more flexible but ultimately what we're doing after workout with stretching is we are telling the nervous system hey that everything is cool and we're taking that joint through a range of motion that it maybe it didn't see during the exercise and we're stimulating some of those joint receptors and sending up that that uh, signal to the brain and then the brain again sees that says all right cool ooh, that, that's where that joint is and that's how that joint moves and I feel comfortable in my ability to predict my survival because I feel those joints 
Uh, so that's kind of the basic premise here. Now there's a few ways of doing it, right? There's the, the passive stretching that most people know, hamstrings, and you know, we're gonna focus a lot on the hip. Generally the hip socket is a high payoff area, and if you create some mobility in the hip socket immediately after a workout, you're gonna walk a lot better. Uh, it's kind of difficult to demonstrate that on the radio, but you know, uh, things that are going to pull your hip in into flexion and a little bit of rotation is going to do real well. And you can all go, you can Google hip stretches and find a whole bunch of good stuff that's going to help. And you want to do that immediately after a workout. And here's what we do we have people do a real quick assessment. So let's say before they come in, show me a forward bend. All right, they reach down and they're three inches off the floor. Uh, you know, and then we do a nice little warm up, show me a forward bend again, and now they reach down and touch the floor because again, we've created a little bit of map clarity to the brain and things are moving better. Uh, go through a hard workout, show me your forward bend or your neck range of motion or whatever assessment we decide. And, and for you listeners, an easy assessment is a forward bend. Just bend forward and how far do you go? Um, and generally, uh, if it's a hard workout and your nervous system's threatened, it's going to tell you and you're not going to reach as far. So all of a sudden they're five inches off the floor. So we take them and we do a little bit of joint mobility. We'll do just some hip circles and uh, and some ankle drills, maybe some ankle flexibility, which I've posted to our website and I'll, I'll, I'll plug that in a second. Um, and then forward bend again and boom, they hit the floor. And in fact, the video that I just posted to our blog um, today shows that we took a person, had him forward bend after a workout and he was about two to three inches off the floor I had him tilt his ankle his heel bone three times each side through you know and I can explain why and how and then we had him circle his hip out in front of him three times and he put his knuckles on the floor you know, instantly hey, this is awesome stuff because this is big time stuff and in I want you to, to plug in a minute because people don't quite get this they often need uh, a few times of instruction with a professional because the reality is is that oftentimes we can't see what we're doing we don't totally know what we're doing Talk about we we just real quickly in a couple of minutes. We one of the things we made mistakes on for people before was in the past they got injuries. We told them to rest. They finished a long workout. We told them not to move. Talk about what you do when you finish some of these races and how we know a little bit better than that and how to how to not make those mistakes anymore. Yeah, great great point. Uh, cool down. You know, <laughs> uh, how many you as an athlete? How many times do you blow off your cool down? I would I would cross the line, jog over to my bag, and run to my car. I mean, it was. There's yeah. some, there's some yeah. days it was bad. You, yeah. you did. You, yeah. you totally did. Yeah. 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 Just because you know, I mean, again, we are in the mindset of performance, and once performance is done, I'm gonna go sit on the couch and kick it, you know, or I'm gonna get my car and drive three miles back to my house. And the fact is, again, the nervous system, if it's in a threatened straight, a threatened state, and you don't cool down and tell it that, hey, you're gonna live, everything's okay, you're gonna see a decrease in function, and that can that can stay, that can affect your postural postural you know control for a while. So. Uh, cooling down, walking is a big one. I mean, again, this sounds no-brainer, but it's important to do it, walking. So we have people walk it off. As soon as they finish a tough workout, I, I push them out the door and say, go walk it off, uh, go around the building, and of course, I have them put the number one sign up on their way, you know, to just so that they won, you know, they, they did it. And um, when they get back, we do a couple of these joint mobilities, a little bit of stretching, a cool down. You can use some breathing. Um, all of that is key. And then now, how to do it, of course, uh, yeah, definitely get with a professional to, to learn the, the tips and tricks, but there's a couple on the website at athloneelite.com. It's A-T-H-L-O-N elite.com. <clears throat> if you hit the blog and, and then click on the blog, you'll see uh, uh, go, us going through a couple of those mobility drills. And then of course, again, just some passive, easy stretching, gentle stretching, and you'll, and then do that forward bend test. And if you're lower, your nervous system's happy, great, well, go home. You're, you're done for the day and you're walking out feeling better than you came in. No, I was just going to say what uh, what he just hit on there is super important. You know, coming up with a little bit of a cool down routine. Uh, it might only take two or three minutes when you finish a hard workout, and it it, it pays dividends in the end. You know, you, if you just pack it up and get in your car, you're going to regret it. If you come up with a two or three minute uh, little cool down routine, with some toe touches, maybe some you mm -hmm. know side bends or something, some torso twists, just something to kind of almost like you would do like an easy warm up. You just an easy cool down. It it you know you don't have to put a lot of effort in. You get a lot of results. Hey, thirty seconds. Ryan, what do they what do they do on Monday after the uh, half marathon? So we talked about what to do after the half marathon. What do they do Monday, the day after that half marathon? Yeah. So again, get out there and and, and get.
get that nervous system moving and let it know that uh, to decrease that threat level. So again, most likely you're going to be sore. You're going to beat up, be beat up. Muscles are sore, tendons are sore, and the nervous system detects this as a threat because it is. It's a threat survival because if the saber-toothed tiger jumps out, uh, you're going to have a hard time surviving, right? And running if you're really sore. So get out, walk it off, and take those joints, all your joints, through a full range of motion. Even just doing finger waves and wrist circles literally tells your brain that everything's okay. Fantastic stuff. We are super happy to have you on board and look forward to each week taking some of these tips and takeaways for some of our listeners to be able to do something that next day on Monday morning. Great show today. Uh, find the podcast tomorrow on livingtherun.com or on facebook.com. Justin Levine, great interview. We got electrolyte drinks and recipes. Next week, we're going to be meeting live at Kennedy Fitness. Uh, one of the things that we're going to do there is it's a food deal. And we're talking food and we're going to be talking with Gar- uh, Gabriel Frank from Gardens by Gabriel. Talk about how to get in the earth. So maybe next week, people get hurt gardening quite a bit. How do they How do they not get hurt gardening? Next week, live healthy, live bold. Come with us to live the run. Thank you.